Things are heating up as we start running down the weekly current events of wrestling news in our next segment, the hot tags. And there's only a couple things that have gone on this week. Not too much uh, huge going on. First things first, WWE has a morality clause in their contract now where if you have like nude pictures on the Internet or anything before you sign the contract, if they find out about that, they can release you. That's kind of odd. You would think that they would be kind of okay with like the stuff that happened before that, but you can't do it now or I don't know. Um, well, here's but... the thing. This, this isn't new. I don't know why this is just starting to pop up on new sites. Now, if, if we remember that, uh, that Amazon chick from that diva season of NXT who got taken off after the first week because they uncovered all those pictures of her from her previous WWE days. I thought that she was mostly knocked out because she really sucked in the ring. And they thought that she had really... uh, maybe maybe a little column may a little column B maybe that was just an extra reason to get rid of her maybe it was a little convenient though that Caitlyn was just kind of thrown into there then she ends up winning the season and didn't they mention uh, her her pictures that she did before coming to WB very recently during her feud with AJ Caitlyn I mean I think so yeah yeah they, she said something about um doing the pictures. Um, and, and here's the biggest question. How are they going to be promoting Shawn Michaels at this time if this is the case? Or if any of the other Divas come back. Yeah, I, I, I think this is all scoop, scoop, scoops nonsense. What do you think, Uh, The thing about this is there's... Like any WWE rule, you've got to justify it. And I don't think they can because for every Amazon freak show who does lesbianism you have caitlin uh for every other diva out there that's done naked pictures there's a mickey james who's basically showed her ass and her minge to public uh you know you can't if they have got this into place it must be fairly new um in terms of what they're doing with it it seems like they'll just justify what means offense what deems offensive Maybe this is more so just kind of like a scapegoat kind of thing. Like they're throwing this out there now because if anything ever happens where they kind of want to release them, but they don't have a reason to, they could just fall back on it. Like with um, Jim Ross now and supposedly the reason that they quote unquote forced him to retire was because of that whole um, symposium. Maybe this is kind of their way out. If they don't like somebody, but they can't just go, look, we don't want to fire, uh, we don't want you in a company anymore, and we want to fire you because we don't like you, or I don't know, you you didn't lose enough weight for us, or something like that. Then they could just go, well, well, you know those pictures before, they're too racy for our PG product and all that. Maybe. How do you really define what's racy anyway? You're talking about a place where men wear underwear and women wear bikinis constantly. And did they have like lingerie pillow fights every five seconds in that place? backstage <laughs> it's it just it, it seems whatever floats vince's boat basically um yeah they'll probably end up getting rid of it eventually it's just one of those things where they'll end up saying one thing and then just do another yeah i'm sure if somebody gets interested in wwe and they're interested in that person and uh you know they're considered a good enough asset they're not going to give a shit whatsoever you mean to tell me that if somebody comes out there and they've like they're like the next John Cena and it turns out that they did an issue with Playgirl or whatever that they're gonna really give a shit no but we'll see pretty sure there's some uh, interesting pictures out there of Randy Orton as well really very interesting pictures hmm. you said well. that a little too good <laughs> <laughs> Uh, WWE Network might be coming the day after Elimination Chamber. They might try to gear that up towards WrestleMania, which makes sense. Although we've heard about six different times that it was going to start. So I wouldn't put any bets on actually getting the WWE Network on that day unless they flat out announce like the terms and you can buy it already and all those other kind of things. If they just... Do another cinema, we're going to cover the network eventually in a couple years kind of thing, then don't think too much about it. Well, the one thing I have to admit that came to mind that Miguel was talking about, which I kind of have to agree with here, 
there was um, G4 TV is no longer available, and they're basically looking to sell that on. So I, I could see the WWE making a play for that again. That would be a good idea, I think. Might as well. What do you it's think? Really I think they're honestly going about this the completely wrong way. If they're still trying to get themselves on cable, they tried. If it didn't catch on the first time, I think what they should really do is commit themselves more to a digital medium. Make something bigger of that WWE app. Make a plus version of it where you're getting all the 24-7 content. And also when you're paying for that, you also have access to it through a web browser. Maybe even look to make apps for uh, PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo. Um, I know they've already reached out to make uh, a relationship with those. They're broadcasting pay-per-views on those mediums. So I think that would be the optimal way to go. That way they're fully in control. They don't have many people they have to answer to as far as what content they can have there and keeping contracts in line. It's And it's also forward thinking. You know, cable television is going to be dying sometime in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Good point. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe they will start doing that. I mean, they are pushing the YouTube page and the app and everything. Although they've given up on Tout, but that's because Tout sucks and nobody gives. Yeah, Tout was Tout. Tout was a terrible <laughs> idea. I think the app is still a very good idea, and I, I don't blame them for wanting to push it as much as they do. But honestly, it's a very lackluster app. There's not a lot in there. You have like wrestler bios. You can look at some pictures. You can get some like polls you can vote on during raw and some backstage pictures that's about it i think they haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what they could really do with that app if they wanted to two other things that might be coming in 2014 whether or not we do get the wwe network there have been rumors that they were going to get rid of battleground and or hell in a cell and cut the pay-per-views but now the rumor going around is that they will get rid of both of those pay-per-views, but instead add Bash at the Beach in June, which will be two pay-per-views in June, and then that they might do War Games again. Now, between all these rumors that are floating around with this, I would say there is a good chance that we could see Bash at the Beach, but I don't think we're going to see War Games. We've heard that rumor for quite a while now, and it seems like War Games is mainly something that the fans want to see. So whenever that rumor goes around, everybody's like, oh my god, War Games, yeah. And anytime that somebody mentions bringing another pay-per-view back, War Games is almost always the first one that people mention. It's either that or King of the Ring, usually. And that kind of just seems like a little bit of fan service. I don't know. But if we do, cool. As long as they keep it away from the Survivor Series, because it's stupid as hell to have them back to back like they used to do with, or or it uh, should be at the Survivor Series, either or, yeah, bring back the War Games match, but not the pay per view, or bring War Games the pay per view maybe I don't know, what do we got like two months after Extreme Rules or something, mm-hmm. something where it's like the middle of uh, the summer or. You know what? I, you obviously you can't mix around with Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, and then um, WrestleMania. So, you know, maybe move like Night of Champions and then put it in Night of Champions spot or something. Who knows? But Bash at the Beach, I think it's cool. And if we get that, awesome. Although I still think that should be more of a special episode of Raw or something instead. And they should cut one of the pay per views because two pay per views in a month is dumb. But what do you think, Burhan? I don't really mind. I I like the old WCW pay per views. Um, I I really would love to see them revive War Games, one of my absolute favorites, or even Halloween Havoc, Bash at the Beach. Uh, I could see it going the same way as American Bash. I guess it would probably be the same thing, but that'd be cool if they kind of kept that same idea where they had like that beach set and the pool and all that. I used to like that. What do you think, Peyton? I, I don't think there's a very good chance of either of these happening. If they did bring back War Games, as I said before, I think the best place they could do it is at Survivor Series. I mean, it almost goes together and it, with names, Survivor Series, War Games. It sounds like a place where you have to survive at all costs. Uh, but as far as Bash at the Beach, I, I guess they could do it. I, I, I think the more likely thing we're going to see revived is just the Bash. Yeah, you know, that pay-per-view that was their watered-down version of the Great American Bash. Some some type of just summer party type excuse that isn't SummerSlam, more of like uh, the barbecue type sense. 
if they did, I hope they do go silly and, and go all out like that. Like, you know, have surfboards at the entrance ramp and dress the commentators in Hawaiian shirts and sandals. Give Kofi Kingston a reason to win, like, every match. Yeah. Because he's the only one who, like, came from the beach kind of an area. Kofi Kingston, should, Kofi Kingston should come down on a surfboard with a bunch of no-names carrying him on the surfboard. <laughs> I think that that wraps up everything for the hot tags. A pretty slow week. Pretty much the only stuff that was going on was Bound for Glory and Hell in a Cell and whatever, and that's about it. So we're going to take a little bit of a break here with the rest hold, and then we're going to come back and talk some Hell in a Cell.